I love Dreamcore. You guys already know how much I love a weird core, but I decided it's time to tackle Dreamcore. Dreamcore is awesome, but it can be kind of hard to get into. It's an acquired taste, but if you want to learn more about Dreamcore, you've come to the right place. This is the Dreamcore Iceberg Explained. If you don't know what an iceberg is, it's basically just a way to organize information, where entries closer to the top are more well known and entries closer to the bottom are less well known. The iceberg I'm using is really well made, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Here's a legend for all the colors of the entries in the iceberg. A lot of the entries here are just songs, and it would be boring for me to just be like, oh yeah, this song exists like 50 times, so I'm just going to be using these entries as background music and not cover them. And I'll put the name of each song in the corner. With that out of the way, let's get into the first layer, Dreamland. I'm sure we all already know what liminal spaces are, but I love these too much, so I'm still gonna talk about it. The concept of a liminal space encompasses physical spaces that, due to their function, are transitional in nature. Hallways, waiting rooms, parking lots, and rest stops are all perfect examples of such places. While this definition is the closest to the usual academic meaning of liminality, it should be noted that liminal space aesthetics have expanded in scope to include images of places that are simply nostalgic, dreamlike, or uncanny, to the point where the only remaining common trait across these ramifications is the striking absence of people. Due to their nostalgic appeal and dreamlike atmosphere, leading many to reflect on the passage of time and yearn for times of innocence and optimism associated with childhood and coming-of-age periods, liminal spaces are also strongly linked with trauma core, hauntology, and other similar aesthetics, and obviously, dream core. Mouths can be used in dream core images, and this mouth right here is the one that is most commonly used. This gives me really creepy vibes, like of old TV shows I watched when I was a kid or something. This image is a classic in Dreamcore culture, which is kind of weird because the lines here are something I've never really seen in any other Dreamcore edits. It's a little different from other Dreamcore, but this image is still one of the greats. Here we got another absolute classic. This is probably the most popular Dreamcore image. I've seen it absolutely everywhere, like in this YouTube video thumbnail. This is one of my favorite elements, and I've already covered it in my Weirdcore Iceberg video, but something about these rectangles just make the whole image it's used in so much more disturbing and mysterious, more off-putting. And it's amazing how Weirdcore and Dreamcore both use these, but in much different ways to create totally different effects. Yumi Niki describes Madotsuki's dreams. The young Japanese girl is in a small room when the player first starts the game. A television, a game system, a bookcase, a desk, and a bed are all present. The player will eventually lead her to the bed where she will lie down and fall asleep. Then the dreaming begins. Madotsuki's next dream transports her to a black nothingness filled with hands. She comes across a hat that, when worn, transforms her head into a hand with a single unblinking eye. Another door leads her to a desolate landscape devoid of color and sound. Another was a series of stairwells that seemed to be going up all the time. She pinches herself to wake up when she is bored or terrified. However, she has the same dreams the next night and the night after that. Yumi Nikki is full of atmospheric dream realms, but nearly entirely absent of what I'd term gameplay. There's no conversation, story, or conflict. It's difficult to reach the game over screen, and there's no clue in the game as to what your objectives are. There are 25 effects dispersed across the world. Each effect, like the hand described above, produces a change in Madotsuki's look or near surroundings. Some of these are useful, while others are illogical. One of them is a bicycle, another item is a knife, which allows Madotsuki to kill any being she encounters in her dreams. None appear to have a larger impact on the game environment. There have been many fan games made and inspiration from Yumi Nikki as well, kind of like FNAF. Rainbows are in a lot of Dreamcore images, you know, to add the whole dreamy and blissful vibe of these images. They're also really nostalgic, at least for me. Strange messages are really what make Dreamcore what it is, to me at least. In my dreams, which are what influenced me to be into Dreamcore in the first place, I feel like I'm always being watched by some supernatural force. In these images, that force voices itself through these strange messages. They're always cryptic and don't have much context, which really feels like the vibe that I get in my own dreams. 
Clouds are a staple of dreams in general, and their use in Dreamcore to give the images a much more airy and open vibe. It even reminds me of old Gmod liminal space maps, how these clouds make Dreamcore images feel so empty and huge, like there's this whole universe, this whole world, and the only thing in it is you and the things around you. A lot of Dreamcore images feature characters, and of those, a lot of them have their face replaced with something. I love these, especially the clocks. For some reason, seeing these old clocks is really nostalgic to me. I watched Hugo when I was little, which is really liminal and dreamy in and of itself, so that's probably where it came from. That movie is honestly probably what helped influence my eventual taste in Dreamcore and Weirdcore. Mushrooms are in a lot of Dreamcore images. The only thing I can say about this is it looks weird. I don't really like it. <laughs> I think shadow people are probably the best element of Dreamcore other than those strange messages I was just talking about. My dreams almost always feature other people, but they always appear like this. They're never exactly real. I had a dream when I was little where I was in my grandparents' house. I opened a door and it led to a staircase going down, but it also revealed something else. I saw my grandmother, really dark and monochrome with bright eyes just staring at me. She led me down the stairs and as I walked through the carpeted floors and white doors, it never ended. It was just staircases after hallways, after staircases, through doors, and so on. It was a really influential dream for me. Anyways, these shadow people in Dreamcore images really carry that energy for me. They creep me out and yet comfort me in such a severe oxymoron. This is probably the most classic Dreamcore image. Everyone knows this image, even if they aren't really into the Dreamcore. It's a perfect Dreamcore image, not much to say here. As strange as it seems, there happen to be a lot of Sanrio characters in Dreamcore. This never was my personal favorite part of Dreamcore, probably because I'm a guy and I never really watched Hello Kitty or anything growing up, <laughs> but it's cool I guess. This is one of my favorite Dreamcore images. I grew up in the church, so I have a lot of nostalgia for buildings like this, and the atmosphere around it is really special, especially this green hill here. I live near this beautiful valley of just hills, and it looks kind of like this, and it's beautiful. These winged eyes appear in a lot of Dreamcore images, and they're really amazing. They go back to the idea I was talking about with how in dreams you're always being watched by something. These eyes have an oxymoronic presence, where they simultaneously feel like they're trying to help you and hurt you. It's really nuanced and interesting. Okay, so those winged eyes? Take away the wings and they become extremely scary. Something about these eyes are just so spooky. I have a whole video on this if you want to check it out, but eyes are one of my favorite elements of Weirdcore and Dreamcore. A lot of Dreamcore images have a message saying wake up, which makes sense considering that it's Dreamcore. Despite how cliche and expected this message is, when done right is perfect. I mean, it is Dreamcore, so a message about waking up makes perfect sense. It creates a lot more immersion, I think. A lot of Dreamcore music consists of other songs that have just been slowed down and reverbed to put you in the mind of a dream. It seems lazy, but it can really do a lot, and it makes songs like Warm Nights by Zori a lot more dreamy and atmospheric. This is really similar to the Black Rectangles, and in my opinion, is just a better version, so I won't say anything more. This is another absolute classic, and it looks really similar to Don't You Wonder What's Inside, although I'm not sure which one came first. Either way, I honestly think that I kind of prefer this one just because of how realistic it looks. It reminds me of like Jack and the Beanstalk type stuff, you know, that I grew up on. Minecraft is sometimes used to convey Dreamcore, and as a Minecraft fanboy who grew up on this game and has more childhood memories in Minecraft than I do outside in real life, I love these images. Minecraft is so nostalgic to me that despite how this shouldn't work at all, it really works for me. Here is another absolute classic Dreamcore image. I see this everywhere, like on Redbubble even. I don't even like this Dreamcore image. I think it's boring and I'm not a fan of the mushrooms, but hey, it's classic. As you guys know, I love Weirdcore and Dreamcore. They're really similar and it can get kind of confusing trying to tell them apart. 
I have a whole video about differentiating them and Raptimer has an amazing video that goes in depth on how they're different, but in all honesty, I don't see that much difference here. I enjoy them both in the same capacity, so if you hear Nalita say that they're different but you don't think so, don't listen to them. Do you. Enjoy what you enjoy in the way you enjoy it. These aesthetics are both so similar that it can be hard to tell them apart and that's okay, I mean they both do the same thing pretty much. Now I'm just waiting for there to be a hundred comments about how I'm wrong and how they're so different. <laughs> Alright, that was the first layer. On to the next layer, Dream Sky. This is a Dreamcore image that personally I don't really think fits into the aesthetic. It's cool, but I wouldn't really classify it as Dreamcore. This is a little online tool you can use to make your own Dreamcore character. It's really cool and it's fun to just mess around with and see what works. It's kind of childish and fun. You should check it out. A lot of Dreamcore images have an overlay that looks like it came out of an old RPG game like Undertale. I think it really adds to the vibe of it, and even adds some nostalgia since I know a lot of people grew up in these RPG games like Zelda and such. This is one of my favorite Dreamcore images. It takes a lot of inspiration from biblical angels, and as a Christian, this hits hard not only religiously but nostalgically because I remember learning about these things when I was little in church and such. The clouds here are also really well done and pretty nostalgic. This whole thing just has the vibe of a fun summer day as a kid while also being, you know, obviously creepy and dreamy. Whoa. I'm seeing this image for the very first time as I'm writing this script and whoa. I love this image. The scope and length of this image is insane and the clocks add an unsettling edge to the whole thing. Sparkles are often used in Dreamcore edits to make it more playful and comforting, again relating back to childhood, and I really like this. It's so pure and innocent, and definitely nostalgic. Bubbles are similarly used to make images feel more comforting and childlike, which really is the whole appeal of Dreamcore if you ask me. To be comforted through reliving childhood. This game is a true veteran of Dreamcore memorabilia on the internet. This game has stood the test of time, and it's amazing. I'm showing you footage right now, but you can't really get the full extent of the experience unless you play it for yourself, which I would definitely recommend if you have the means. This game is freaky, comforting, and just amazing. This image is one that I definitely keep seeing, and I love it. I already talked about how much I love these shadow people, which by the way I want to make a video on, let me know in the comments if you want to see that, but anyways, this image uses those shadow people perfectly. I feel like I've been at this party before, I'm literally almost coming to tears writing this in the script. I mean, childhood trauma, birthday parties, everything comes back from this image, it's insane. I know this image because it's the thumbnail of this one Dreamcore playlist on YouTube and that's it. I don't really like this image if I'm being honest. I think it misunderstands the point of Dreamcore. Almost like it doesn't really understand what Dreamcore is meant to convey, but that's just me. Kidcore is an aesthetic that's similar to Dreamcore in a lot of ways. Remember how I was talking about how Dreamcore is all about reliving your childhood through dreams? Kidcore is all about that, but without the dreams. Kidcore is full of vibrant colors designed for millennial and Gen Z kids to kick nostalgia in. If you grew up in the 2000s, then this aesthetic will probably either bring you to tears or make you stop and just think for a second. A lot of Dreamcore images include teeth. I can think of a few possible reasonings behind this. First, teeth are just inherently off-putting and they can fit the vibes of a lot of these images. The other reason I can think of is, you guessed it, related to childhood trauma. I know a lot of Gen Z kids, myself included, have a lot of bad or just weird memories associated with the dentist's office, so I'm sure these teeth hit that same part of the brain as those memories. Another classic, this image really takes the Windows XP background inspiration to the max, with the iconic aerial font and a bubble. I like it. Okay, I've never heard of this creator before and I'm looking at this YouTube channel for the first time as I'm writing the script and oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is a perfect example of taking the Dreamcore aesthetic and conveying it through video in a unique new way. 
I love this image. Growing up in rural North Carolina, these sort of houses were everywhere, especially in similarly desolate and empty areas like in this image. I mean obviously not as dead and empty as in the image, but definitely like the same vibe. Very nostalgic. Television noise. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Old TVs played a large role in a lot of people's childhood, and the noise present in Dreamcore can really hit that nostalgia. This is a level of the back rooms that has strong Dreamcore ties. I love this level. Level 94 appears to be a large town with a floating castle and grass hills, but everything has a grainy effect, as if this place was crafted. The main town is safe, with no entities during the day. This town is a big water fountain in the center, flowing with almond water. This town seems to be in the 1930s, in a stop motion type feel. This town has tiny houses with some furniture, mostly in the 1930s to 1950s. This town also has 1930s styled cars and milk vans filled with almond milk. The town also has siren poles, which time to time play happy cartoony music. The grass holes of level 94 usually go on forever and is infinite. The only thing there are a few strange cars parked in the middle of nowhere and a water tower. What is strange about the hills is that random sets of furniture and even entire rooms of a house can be found, or sometimes it's just a wall with furniture next to it. Above the hills you will see a floating castle on what looks like a transparent mountain. So apparently this guy made this iconic Dreamcore image? On screen are just a small selection of this guy's amazing catalog. Definitely check out his work if you like Dreamcore. I'm surprised I haven't heard of him. So apparently there is an official Dreamcore Discord server. I never knew that. Jame is another Dreamcore creator on Tumblr and I love his work, especially this image. This page is worth a scroll through just to check out. This refers to this reddit post where someone turns their island in Animal Crossing into a Dreamcore explosion. Not exactly my thing, but this is really cool and it must have taken a whole lot of work and effort. Ooh, here we go, another one of my favorite staples of Dreamcore. This image right here is a perfect showing of everything I love about Dreamcore. Extremely nostalgic liminal spaces with creepy and open areas. This liminal space especially hits hard for me. When I was little, my parents split up and I moved around a lot with my mom, and this picture reminds me of one of the apartments I was moving out of. It was completely empty with just the carpets, walls, and windows, and I was watching so many memories just disappear. Anyways. Alright, we still have some deeper depths. Let's get into the next layer, Dream City. Oh my gosh, the first thing that comes to mind when I see this is movie theaters. I remember they used to look so big, so grand when I was a kid. The house here also is so nostalgic, I love this image. Classic, classic Dreamcore. Probably a huge inspiration for Jordan's Dreamcore work, which if you know me, you know I love. This one reminds me of the model home from Arrested Development. <laughs> I like how realistic this one appears at first. The sky and trees all look so real and like a memory rather than a Dreamcore edit. Nostalgicore is an aesthetic involving nostalgia and archived history. The visual aspect of Nostalgicore can include pixel art, low poly 3D models, the fuzziness of a CRT screen, and whatever else can be associated with it, whether it be famous quotes. For example, The Legend of Zelda's, it's dangerous to go alone, take this sound effects, or the machines the games were played on. It can also include images and other things that were popular during nostalgic times, such as TV shows, music, movies, amusement parks, malls, movie theaters, arcades, stores, fashion trends, etc. This reminds me of those rides to the fair as a kid. You know, the ones where you spin the thing in the middle and the whole thing like spins around. Holy crap, I swear I've dreamed this before. This is my first time seeing this edit, but I swear I have been here in a dream. I love the blacked out walls. It's like you're in a huge complex or something with fake grass. Really awesome. Heavy, heavy childhood trauma here. Picnics especially are something that are limited to my childhood. So personally, seeing this here is pretty crazy. 
another thing that I swear I've dreamed. I have a recurring type of dream where I'm driving or in the passenger seat and we're driving across all these weird roads that go up huge hills or into the air and the whole time I have a fear of falling off. Okay, the more edits that I see with mushrooms, the more I do not understand the appeal of mushrooms. But that's just me. My first thought from seeing this one is that it reminds me of that one screen from FNAF where it shows the graves of all the kids. If you know what I mean. I like this edit. This brings me straight back to days where I would play outside with my sister. Back when everything was so simple and nothing could ever go wrong. Damn. Um, I guess meat is used in Dreamcore sometimes? This is a little weird, but hey, whatever works for people. So apparently, this image was generated by an AI. It's cool, but nothing really special to me. Whoa, this is weird as hell, but I love it. Again, never seen this before right now as I'm writing the script, but I absolutely love this. Another one that I've never seen before, but I love it. It looks like the stairs in a basement from my childhood, and the low poly on this makes it even more beautiful. This right here is a perfect Dreamcore edit, in my opinion. Alright, once again, I've teamed up with my friend Raptimer to help me with this video, so here he is to talk about the next layer, Dream Hill. Hey, my name is Raptimer, and I'm going to cover the fourth layer on this iceberg. Thank you, boy, for having me on this video, and let's get right into it. Presence behind. I'm not sure what this picture is supposed to mean, but the creepy drawings on the wall make me feel like it's about something pretty dark. Exile. Exile is a calm yet unnerving ambient made by Cairo Chamber, and it is the one I'm playing in the background of this lair. Bunny. Bunny is a drawing of a bunny with red eyes watching it, fitting with the Dreamcore aesthetic. Don't hug me, I'm scared instrumental. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a famous YouTube series known for its colorful and dreamy design. The instrumental themes enhance this dreamy feeling. I remember watching this as a kid, and the main song always made me feel so uncomfortable. Trauma Core Now, Trauma Core is a very sensitive topic for many. Some don't like to call it an aesthetic and compare it with aesthetics like Dream Core, and I won't go into details about it in this layer, but you can go watch my disturbing aesthetics video that I made back on my channel if you're interested in learning more about Trauma Core. 13 Angels Standing Guard Around the Side of Your Bed This is another dreamy song on YouTube, and from now on, I will leave out the songs from this layer, because most of them are just... ambient. Sins of the Past Sins of the Past is another series on YouTube that used Dreamcore elements to convey the story. This series is disturbing, but I recommend that you check it out. Stairway to Heaven Stairway to Heaven is an image that is taken straight out of a dream. It is edited, of course, but it's really dreamy and I love it. Having Strange Dreams? Having Strange Dreams is an abstract image that uses weirdcore and dreamcore elements. Eye Ocean Eye Ocean is just an image with eyes in the ocean. My Happy Place My Happy Place is a short walking simulator made for the Liminal Space Jam in only 4 days. I'm actually hosting and judging the upcoming Liminal Space Game Jam, and I can't wait to see the amazing games made by the developers. My happy place looks great. Mother is Watching Mother is Watching is a weird series on YouTube. Here we meet different strange characters in this Dreamcore setting. Dreamcore slash Weirdcore Trip Dreamcore slash Weirdcore Trip is a Dreamcore slash Weirdcore map created in Roblox. The Path in the Hole this image is iconic. Misplaced houses and strange roads are perfect for Dreamcore. Game Room I swear I have been here as a child. I find it so fascinating that images like these with clouds and colorful furniture give us so many nostalgic and strange feelings. It must have something to do with the childhood memories that we think that we forgot about. These memories that lack any details. R slash Dreamcore aesthetic R slash Dreamcore Aesthetic is a subreddit for the Dreamcore Aesthetic. B Birthday B Birthday is a really well made Dreamcore game that you can purchase on itch.io for $14.99. Dreamy Dreamy is an aesthetic that revolves around dreams. Duh. 
the dreamy aesthetic can dance between the realms of being somewhat grounded in reality to being so surreal that there's no confusing it with one's state of reality. Voidcore. View discretion is advised. Voidcore is an aesthetic that focuses on empty space, loneliness, and the discomfort created by those concepts. Voidcore is an offshoot of Weirdcore with an emphasis on emptiness, dread, death, and darkness. City. City is yet another great Dreamcore image. And that was all for me. The things that I didn't mention are either songs or topics that got removed from Google. So back to you, Poi. Alright guys, what's up? I'm back. Let's get into the next layer, Dream House. Love this image. The sky and pool are switched, which is genius, and the text here is perfect, the image quality is beautiful, and my god, I just love this image. This is a game that I played in my Rise of Dreamcore video, but I'll briefly discuss it here. I really like this game. It's a unique take on Dreamcore, and it's really confusing, but in a good way. It's free, and I would totally recommend playing this if you have the means. This is apparently another Dreamcore subreddit that has a lot of good content. I honestly think that I prefer this one to the other subreddit, Dreamcore Aesthetic. This one seems a lot more niche, and everyone who posts here clearly has a true love for the real Dreamcore Aesthetic. Definitely worth looking at and just scrolling through. So here is a classic liminal space turned into Dreamcore. I honestly think that I like it better as liminal space, but probably just because I can only see it as the original image, so my opinion is like biased. Legendary, perfect, love this, nothing else to say. I've seen this game a lot, and to be honest, I never really got the appeal. It's just boring to me, I don't know. <laughs> How have I never seen this before? I love this image. The stop sign too especially gives it such a unique vibe. The shadow in the corner, I love it. Flowers in a school hallway. What else is there to say? Here is another pick room maker and it's pretty unique. I like it, it's different than the other one. I'm not really sure what this website is, but I like it. I think it's a bunch of AI-generated music. It is insane though, I love it. Animoia is a great emotion that is perfectly conveyed in Dreamcore. Animoia is a deep emotional state of a person in which they feel greatly attracted to the nostalgic memories which they've never experienced themselves. Animoia can be of anything, ranging from feeling nostalgic about someone, something, or some place. An example may include a person who's greatly attached to the Renaissance era, despite their never existing at the time of that era. Another example is the nostalgia for the good old days, more specifically, the good old days that a person hasn't even experienced. Here's a small creator that makes compilations of Weirdcore and Dreamcore. These compilations are actually really good and they don't feel exactly the same as every other one on YouTube. If you see this bro, hit me up, we can work together. This image never loaded for me. So sad. <laughs> Alright guys, we're almost there. One more to go. On to the last layer, Dream Garden. Okay, now, for this last layer, it's almost all images, so I'm just gonna record my raw reaction to seeing all of these for the first time. Whoa, this one looks like Roblox. I don't know if I'm just being stupid, but it kinda looks like Roblox. Um, I, I, I guess so. This is a... Is, is that a whale? Is it a skeletal whale? This looks like that famous painting, but like, from the outside, you know what I mean? I'm here to watch over you, I worry a lot about you, I hope you'll be better, I'll take care of you during this time. Um, this one's not my thing. <laughs> this is not my thing. Um, but, but hey, I mean, I never really had like stuffed animals growing up, but hey, I like this, this is cool. I love this one, oh my god. I, I have family up in, in rural, like Midwest area. And so every time that I drive up there, I see all these windmills, and I've always loved that as like a liminal space. And and this is just beautiful. I love this. I love this. This is this is awesome. Oh my god. Um, the end is near. Oh my god. Spider eyes with a red background and some girl in the middle that's kind of bad. This picture is awesome. This is like some nightmare material. Okay, this is another one. Okay, y'all know I love the black 
the black rectangles. This is awesome. This is awesome. I also have a uh, I have a fear called pseudophobia. You can look that up. And and so that just makes this image amazing to me. Okay, okay. This is this is another great one. There are only good ones in this layer. Oh my god. This literally looks like the house that I grew up in. This is okay. This is like actually getting emotional for me. Oh my god. Classic, classic dream core. This is just you know. This is a dream core, dream core edit. This is just the most dream core it can get. Okay. Hey there. Oh my god. Okay, so it's a school. My mom is a teacher, so I have I have crazy nostalgia for, for like schools like at nighttime and stuff, you know, because I would stay past to like help her out or whatever before she went home and it would become like nighttime with the lights off and everything. So and and, and y'all also know that I love the, the eyes with the wings. This is this is awesome. This is amazing. Okay, mushrooms. Ah, cool. Ah. Oh my god, the moon. The moon. I, I, I love edits with the moon. I don't even care for the mushroom at, at this point because I love edits with the moon. I if if y'all are real fans and you've seen my my video on, on the Puzzle Agent series, and the the whole main conflict in that game is all about the moon and like lunacy and, and the hidden people and everything. So I, I love I love moon stuff. Okay, I don't know if this creator's work is original, but if it is, they deserve so many more subscribers. This is awesome. This is so unique and well made. Yet another Dreamcore subreddit. I don't know why there's so many. This seems to be a lot more videos than images, so I guess it's a little unique there. All right, you've made it to the end of the iceberg. Thank you so much for watching the whole way through. If you enjoyed this, you know, subscribe, all that stuff. But before you go, before you go, I have an announcement to make. About a year ago, I finished a full album of my own music where it's not like the stuff that I upload on my channel, it's like me singing and stuff in it. And it's a whole concept. And I just decided to release it to SoundCloud and YouTube. So I'll leave links below. I would love for y'all to check that out. If you're interested, it is an album about me exploring my dreams. It's kind of like hyper pop, art pop, ambient pop kind of vibe. It's weird. It's like electronic. But yeah, and if you guys like it enough, I will try to get it on Spotify and all that stuff. But I just wanted to release this for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching this video. Sweet dreams.